In this HVAC training video, we're going over line set corrosion causing refrigerant leaks in HVAC units. So we're going to be going over the main cause of this corrosion and also how to avoid it, especially in these mini split units. Now let's take a look at a job site I was just at where the unit's only five years old. This mini split system's off and we're measuring a pressure that's very, very low. And so that indicates that we have a refrigerant leak. And in fact, we've leaked about 95% of all the refrigerant from this system. We also notice that we have the outer jacket on the insulation is all cracked. And that's due to the sun and the UV rays breaking down that outer layer. And so that is a problem and I'm gonna explain why. Formicary copper corrosion can occur on the copper line set if it has three things. One is oxygen, number two is water, and number three is an organic acid. So if you have all that at the copper surface, it reacts with the copper and causes pinhole leaks into the copper causing these refrigerant leaks. So where are these organic acids coming from? So if you have polyethylene uh, line set insulation like this, you could end up having VOCs basically just coming off of the insulation as it is. You could also have the uh, sun breaking down this outer layer of insulation. You see this is all cracked right here. And then what's gonna happen is the sun's gonna then break down the closed cell polyethylene insulation, and then more water's gonna get in there. And the sun is breaking down that insulation. So VOCs are released. And so those organic compounds mixed with the oxygen and the water to create this corrosion that makes the line set look like it's 40 years old, but it's not. It's just a corrosion that's occurring on the line set. And the thing is, it may not even happen where the line set insulation is cracked at. It actually uh, may be traveling to a different location if there's space between the line set insulation and the copper. And if you have water in there, it could just be wicking up uphill. It could be going horizontally. And so you really wanna take a look at not just where the insulation is cracked at and, and check for refrigerant leaks there, but you wanna check the whole length. And in this case, on this job, we have our main line set leaks uh, up vertically on the wall, maybe about eight feet away from this primary area where the line set insulation is cracked. Now, when you're searching for these leaks, you can use a non-corrosive bubble detector, such as the Big Blue from Viper Refrigeration Technologies, and you're just gonna smear that over the entire line set, but realistically, Anytime that you are peeling off the line set insulation and you see green uh, in the line set insulation or you see the, the black or the uh, green and brown kind of growth on here, that's gonna be the spots that you wanna quickly target with the non-corrosive bubble leak detector. And so you should be able to find some of the refrigerant leaks fairly quickly by doing this. The biggest thing is you gotta make sure to check in areas that are maybe downstream, maybe they're in the crawl space or something like that, further away from where that line set insulation is cracked at, and then you'll find where the leak is. Now it's important to replace this line set after you find the refrigerant leak, so you're gonna have to recover the rest of the refrigerant from the system in order to then replace this line set with new line set. Now I wanna go over some of the insulation types and some of the installation strategies so that you're aware to try to avoid the formicary corrosion from occurring again after you replace that line set. So I certainly am not a chemist, and I'm just gonna be pointing out some, some observations here. And so this is a rubberized type of foam, which is typically what we've been using for many, many years. Here we have a polymeric jacket that's co-extruded onto that rubberized foam. And so this is meant to uh, provide like a, a less of ability for it to rip when you're pulling it through, and also for the UV protection to try to have it be a thicker outer jacket. Here we have a uh, white polyethylene, or this is actually like a kind of like a clear foam. It's also referred to as white. And it has a thin uh, polyethylene jacket on the outside. And so on the inside of here, there's only one layer of foam. And similar to these, these are one layer of foam. Uh, but this is more of a plasticized uh, foam. So it's a polyethylene, whereas this one's a more rubberized type of foam. Now here we have one foam section on the whole outside here with a thin jacket, but this one actually has an added uh, polyethylene jacket or, or some other type of sleeve material tight to the copper. And then this one over here has two different uh, layers of polyethylene insulation and once again, a thin outer jacket. So this just is my personal experience, but for the most part, I seem to be having most of the corrosion problems with the polyethylene insulation. And so not so much with the rubber uh, foam insulation, but I'm sure it can occur either, either way. 
And so one of the issues here is you see there's an air gap in there. And so if you have the outer jacket being broken down and then water gets in from here or even gets in over by the flare knot and then travels horizontally and you have space for air, you've got your organic compounds and you've got your water. And so that could be a part of the issue. Now, this one right here, it's got that sleeve. And so it doesn't even matter if you have water and air in there because this sleeve is actually protecting the copper from all of it, uh, at least for the water and the oxygen. Uh, but the uh, polyethylene jacket, if that's what it is made out of, it's still gonna be touching the copper, but it's not gonna be able to cause that reaction because it needs all three in order to cause a reaction. Here you have two layers of insulation, so the, uh, the UV would have to break down the outer layer and also that inner layer to get through to the second uh, layer of the foam in order to get over to the inside. But here you see that there's a large gap uh, for that to occur. And so realistically, um, you just wanna make sure to cover the line set. And now this particular one, when you pull it away from uh, the other line set, so it's, it's connected uh, with a vapor line right there, uh, you're going to be already ripping through that outer layer. And it's really not very thick at all. Now line set insulation manufacturers may make a variety of different insulation types. So this may not be a problem moving forward, I'm not sure. Um, like I said, I'm not a, not a chemist. But what you can do in the meanwhile is you can close down right at the edge here to not allow any water to get in. So maybe you might want to put two zip ties in place and you can use uh, vinyl tape. And so this is SPVC tape. So you can wrap this and this is going to be your UV resistant tape. It's not going to uh, stop it completely, but this is supposed to protect that outer layer. So you could use something like this, but once again, this type is not adhesive because it doesn't want to add another uh, chemical basically in place right here as well that the, uh, the sun could break down. Or you could use an Airex cover like this right here, which wraps around the line set. And then you just Velcro this right in place. And so you'd put that in a way where the, the water is not gonna be entering it. And then you put a clamp right here. This termination kit would go uh, on the exterior wall and get mounted there. And you'd have a clamp here, and this would terminate inside the cabinet of your outdoor unit. And so you could also put a clamp right here as well just to protect that outer layer. So that's installed on this unit here from underneath the line set cover to over to the mini split outdoor unit cover. And so as you can see, as we pan the camera up, you'll see other spots that are green and brown and things like that on this line set all the way up here, even though that line set insulation was not cracked. There's many different signs of the formicary corrosion here, such as this one right here and another picture right here of this line set. But this is the main spot right here, and we're gonna add bubble leak detector on this, and you can see the bubble forming and just continuing to grow. So this is the largest one that I found, but there are other small leaks as well, but those bubbles aren't forming as quickly as this one right here. And in fact, you can see the refrigerant and the refrigerant wheel swirling around inside this bubble. Another thing to think about is if you have this copper pipe exposed or you leave a slit in the insulation, then during air conditioning mode, the refrigerant traveling through this pipe is low in temperature. And so it's gonna attract any humidity surrounding the pipe onto the pipe. So you're gonna have condensed water on the tube along with the air and the VOCs from the insulation. So it's a possible scenario for formicary corrosion to occur even if there's no rainwater getting in the line set. Now let me take you in for an up close view at 800 times magnification on some of this corroded copper tubing. So each of these pictures was taken at a different spot on the copper tubing, and here you see clean copper, so you see there's a huge difference. Now while the line set's traveling up the exterior of the building or even horizontally, you wanna use some type of line set cover so this can just snap together, this can slide into here, and then you could drill a hole here into the building, and then you put this cover on in order to then seal it up, and you put sealant right here along where the cover connects to the building in order to protect it. Another thing that you could potentially use is a PVC downspout, but it's not gonna provide as much protection for that line set. Now I would still advise to seal up the line set outside where the indoor unit connects to the line set at, just in case that line set cover was not completely sealed very well up against the building and any rainwater were to get in. 
Lines that may leak out in the field due to problems such as a bad braze joint, a bad flare connection, maybe copper rubbing up against another section of copper. You could have copper maybe touching concrete and there's a chemical reaction there. There could be an electrolysis effect. But in this video, I wanted to focus on copper formicary corrosion because it happens a lot out in the field on these mini split systems and it's hidden underneath of the insulation. And make sure to check out our new book on inverter mini splits. And we go over the electrical operation of all the components inside. We go over the refrigerant related practices and a lot of the questions that you may have concerning these systems. So check this out in the full outline over at acservicetech.com in the mini split tab. And we also have those resources available on Amazon. Hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech channel.